What's up, guys? Check this out. Today's the first time in six years that we've had somebody from this industry on the podcast. We've got a professional supercross, pro motocross, and super motocross racer joining the show. I want to give you a couple of uh, accolades that this racer has received. Seven career 250 class wins, 16 career 250 class podiums, 2021 Monster Energy Supercross 250 East Class 4th place, 2020 Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship 450 6th place, and 2016 Monster Energy Supercross 250 West 3rd place. This guy has been racing for a very long time. He's gone through the ups and downs, injuries, major comebacks. Today he's talking about the life of a pro racer, the ups and downs, everything in between. We're going to be hearing about his YouTube channel that he has with his wife where they vlog about their life and the behind the scenes of being a pro racer we're going to learn all about the sport through this guy you don't want to miss this episode of the game time guru so what time is it game time Boom. this is the game time guru podcast where i interview sports figures from all over the world to help deliver a panoramic view on sports so whether you're a former athlete one of the crazies or simply a casual sports fan this is the perfect show for you as we peel back the curtains and learn from our guests every single week. I'm your host, Shane Larson, and I'm helping you see sports through a different lens. What's up, everybody? Welcome out to another episode of the Game Time Guru Podcast. I am your host, Shane Larson. Excited to be here with you guys for another interview and another week here on the show. Six and a half years almost of this show, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who's tuned in. Um, who, who's helped me out, whether you've left a review on my podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or maybe you're helping me build my YouTube channel, which I left dormant for six years, and I finally decided I wanted to kind of build that. Um, so for anybody who's followed me on YouTube, any kind of assistance in the media sphere really helps me out. But I appreciate everybody because it's all because of you guys who have helped me out and getting this into 180 countries, all 50 states, and it's all organic growth. And it's because the people who have listened and shared and the people who have been on the show and shared their stories. So just want to give a massive shout out to everybody uh, for their help and everyone. If you've sponsored my show before, I appreciate you everything. So thank you guys so much. Today's a very special one. Before we started recording this, I was actually talking to our guests here uh, about how this is the first time brings, bringing somebody from this industry into the show. So we're going to be talking to a racer. He's super cross. We're talking about all of this, like the whole industry, what he's learned, his ups and downs. And as you guys heard in the introduction, this guy knows his stuff. So if you actually are familiar with the industry, you'll know who the guy is. Um, his name is Christian Craig. Joining the show. Christian, thanks so much for joining us, man. Yeah, happy to be on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. So let's, let's take a little bit of a walk back in time, if you, if you don't mind, Christian. We talk about, like, I, I like to hear about, you know, where you're at now at the, the, the top part of the sport. But I want to go back in time. For a sport such as yours, it's kind of unique, right? It's not quote unquote traditional where like, Oh, I picked up a basketball when I was two years old or, Oh, but maybe you had a similar story of like the first time you jumped on a bike. So I want to know like what got you interested in this and when was the first time you decided like, Hey, I want to, I want to ride a bike. Like, well, I want to do this. Like what talk to us about that. Let's unbox that part of your life. Yeah. So I, I was pretty much born into it. Um, my dad raced professionally. Um, that was his job. And, I grew up going to the races. Um, that's that's what I knew. My dad was a pretty good racer in his time. Um, he he won some a few races, and so I watched him um, throughout his whole career. And to be honest, when I was little, I didn't. I wanted nothing to do with dirt bikes. Um, I was. I just wanted race BMX or do the the normal sports. But um, it was around age eleven is where I started picking it up and um, taking it more serious. So. Yeah, with with our sport, you kind of have to start young and develop your you know your skill early. And um, so I, I started around 10, 11, and that's late in our sport. But yeah, it's uh, I just slowly progressed each year. Um, I was never the dominant one. Like uh, I never went to these these amateur nationals they call it and and dominated them. But I was always competitive um, enough for some teams to you know to open their eyes and. Um, yeah, I've had a, a pretty unique career. Um, unlike, you know, the, the normal path to, um, a lot of these riders take, um, I took different paths and a lot of injuries that obviously played into it, but that was kind of the start is, um, yeah, obviously my father. And then just, uh, I, I caught on, you know, around 10, 11. Man, super cool though. So 
you know, your dad's kind of the, the, I guess the example to you there, do you have a favorite memory uh, growing up um, being around the races and whatnot, like a favorite race that you watched your dad compete in um, or a favorite memory that your dad was part of that when you were a kid before you started your, your own racing career? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them stand out. Um, and we, we still race in a lot of those stadiums. So it brings back a lot of nostalgia, like every weekend or every time we go back to these stadiums, um, I remember sitting in the stands, you know, I can, I can point at the same, you know, chair that I sat in when I was eight years old and watched my dad. And then, then now I'm racing. So, but, uh, one that stands out is my dad was on the podium and, um, he brought me up there and, uh, I remember looking at the big screen and it was showing me and I just froze up. I remember. So that's something that stands out. Um, and fortunately I, I've been on the podium and I've got to bring my son up. And so it's come for full circle now. Well, that is actually pretty sweet, man. That is, that's actually really, really cool. You know, one of the questions that, you know, as I was putting together this interview, just kind of thinking of the things that the fans would want to hear, um, myself included, talking about the bikes. I mean, we can go as, as basic as the type of bike uh, that you race, the different, you know, di the intricacies of the sport. So I want to talk about that. Like, what is the size of the bike that you're racing in Supercross? And what's the differences between the bikes that you have? Because everyone's very particular. I've talked to Indy car racers. I've talked to NASCAR racers. I've talked to people like that. And they talk about, there's little intricacies about each vehicle and whatnot. And um, I just kind of want to pick your brain on that so we can get some insight on the sport. Yeah. So Supercross has two different classes, um, 250, 450. And uh, 250 is a little bit um, slower motor, but it's the same size bike um, and the same chassis and frame. And it looks the same, just goes a little bit slower. So that is kind of the intro class, the 250 class. Um, that's for the younger and you kind of grow into that. And then the premier class is 450. A um, little bit faster, almost too fast. You know, nowadays these bikes are are too fast for these tracks that we're racing on, and you have to almost detune them um, to be controlled. So, uh, you know, it's uh, we used to race two strokes back in the day. Well, I never did, but that's how it started, and now we're on four strokes. Um, and yeah, like I said, these bikes are are ridiculous fast. Um, we're hitting jumps at a crazy speed. I don't know exactly the miles per hour, but we're hitting triples, um, sometimes quads you know, that's four jumps, which is, it's, it's crazy it's, to think now that's what we're at. But, um, yeah, so those are the two classes that supercross and motocross do. Um, and, uh, that's kind of the, the tip of our, you know, our sport. Super interesting it, from a, from a physical standpoint, Christian, like somebody like yourself who has had all these accolades and I've mentioned these in the introduction, but the, the accolades and what you've been able to accomplish in the sport. Um, I mean, you obviously know how to train, you know, the mental side of it and everything, but from a physical standpoint, what kind of training would a supercross, you know, racer need to be able to compete at that next level? Cause some people might just think like, dude, you just got to get on a bike and know how to ride it. You don't need to be strong. You don't need to have any conditioning and so forth. But I am curious, like what kind of physical conditioning do you need? So this is kind of like, there's no set stone of like, this is what you need to do. Um, you need a lot of different trainers and coaches will tell you what's best, but um, obviously lots and lots of laps at the practice track. That's number one is you're going to get better while you're riding the dirt bike, not off of it. So, but, uh, you know, cross training, we like, we cycle mountain bike, road bike, um, not too long hour to two hours, you know, so our, our main events in supercross are 20 minutes, but they're super high intensity. So when we cycle, it's nothing, we don't need to go for four hours. You know, we're not pro cyclist. Um, and in the gym, just, um, a lot of core, upper body, lower body, just full body stuff. Um, when you're on the bike, you're working every muscle. You know, it. Uh, you have a high heart rate. Um, your legs are pumping up. Your upper body is pumping up. You know, so you like to be all around just strong. You don't focus on one, you know, muscle group. So um, little things like that. And you kind of, throughout the years, you grow and, and learn what works best for you. Um, everyone kind of has their little... There are things that work best. Um, some people like to go cycling more or some people like to spend more time in the gym, but I think a mix of both is, uh, you know, what works best. Totally, man. You know, from a mental standpoint, I've always wondered this, so I'm excited I get the opportunity to ask you this from a mental standpoint, as a former boxer, we always used to say things, you can train as hard as you want. You feel like you're prepared, but sometimes mentally a fighter, as soon as the bell rings, it's almost like they've forgotten everything. And then there's other fighters who are able to slow things down and be able to process. Well, in racing, it always seems like, I mean, there's just so many bikes, 
all next to each other. It's a lot of intensity. The crowds there, there's pressures that are out there, the invisible pressures and then the physical pressures that are there. And uh, sometimes all the training in the world just kind of goes out the window if you're not mentally prepared. So I'm just curious, do you have any like pre-race rituals that you go through or just kind of ritual is a weird word to say, just a pre-race, like, you know, routine that you go through to kind of like get your mind right, to be able to be like, okay, like block out the noise. It's time to go. That way you don't make any like tiny mistakes that could be critical for the end of the race. Yeah, I think uh, mentality is huge. Um, you could be the fastest one at the practice track, the strongest one in the gym, but if you don't show up on Saturday night at the race, um, and you don't show up mentally, you know, you're not going to win. There's uh, 20, 21 other guys on the gate that want it just as bad as you. Um, so I think mentality plays into it big time. Uh, every rider kind of has their thing that, that gets them locked in, I would say. Um, you know, sitting on the gate, you're, you're controlling nerves, you're controlling emotion uh you're controlling fear there's so many things going through your head so i'd say the biggest thing for me is just self-talk um talking to myself down like just keeping myself focused i'm um, calm and you know biggest thing is just believing in myself believing in my abilities um knowing that i've been there i've won before uh, it, it's it's uh it's hard to get confidence in this sport and it's uh really easy to lose it so um you know, it's, I feel like boxing similar, you know, if you, you can train every day and, and be the best in the gym, but, um, when that, that bell rings, you know, that's where the mentality kicks in. So yeah, a lot of emotions on the gate, um, obviously super focused and, you know, you have a, a big task ahead of, ahead of you and, and, you know, you have a dirt bike you're sitting on, that could really do some damage and a lot of injuries play into it too, for sure. That's what I wanted to, sorry, unpack with you as well as the injuries. So you, you mentioned it twice, and this is a big part of that sport. I mean, you're you're riding a vehicle at fast speed, and like there's other bi like bikes coming at you at very fast speed. These guys are going crazy, and you've suffered some pretty serious injuries. Um, and I just did a segment on my podcast about injuries. I was talking about it on my social media, um, and this is just in any sport. So I'm I want to break this down from your sport is extremely dangerous, extremely yeah. dangerous. So mentally that's a, that's, that just, that, this, it messes with your head, but I want to ask you, you know, let's go through your injury so that the, the listeners have an understanding. So like, hopefully by now they're listening to the podcast. They've already Googled your name. If they didn't know who you were and the ones who do know who you are are probably already like, Oh my gosh, yeah. like I know who he is, but I want you to let these, these people know some of the injuries you've gone through. And then I want to kind of unbox that a little bit and ask you how the recovery process was, not just physically, but from a psychological standpoint too. So what are some of the injuries, I guess, the worst injuries you face in the sport? Yeah. So, I mean, I've had countless, um, you know, little injuries. I, I mean, not little, but broken wrists, broken ankles, tib fibs. Um, but the biggest one would stand out was my broken back. Um, a bike, I had a back bike failure off of a jump and went for a ride, um, crashed and, uh, actually lost feeling in my lower body for a while. Um, had, uh, some serious surgery, two 12 hour surgeries to repair my, my spinal cord and my lower back. Um, luckily I was able to make a full recovery and, um, that right there obviously is a lot to overcome mentally and to even get back on a dirt bike after that. Um, I had to take a year off. So, I've kind of explained that quite a bit throughout my career. And that's kind of why my, my career has been so up and down is I've dealt with a lot of injuries. Um, a lot of, a lot of time on the couch, unfortunately, than on the dirt bike track, but, um, I've learned over the years. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's kind of the key to our sport is staying healthy and being out at the racetrack every weekend. You know, we race a lot and we risk a lot. So, uh, yeah, but injuries are part of it and you gotta be willing to, to risk it. A broken back, man. So what, what year was your, um, your injury for your back? So mine was in 2009 and I was pretty early on in my pro career. Um, that was my first year of being pro and, uh, yeah, the bike failure at a practice track and, um, that took me out a year and I'd say longer mentally, you know, it took, I'm, I still think about it to this day and something that I have to control and, um, you know, overcome and when I, every time I get over that on that bike. Wow. Okay. So first year you're coming back two 12 hour surgeries to, to, and, you, and you, it's interesting because what you said was like, you know, we made a full recovery, but, and that's what I think a lot of the, the general public, like the, just the, 
the general fan base, they'll just say, oh, yeah, the athlete, he, he made a full recovery. He had a broken back. So, like, the, the full recovery, there's so much behind, like, what a full recovery means. There's so much probably rehab that you're going through um, on the back end. When you say you made a full recovery, you said it was about a year physically to make, yeah. at least from a physical standpoint. What, what did your recovery consist of? So people haven't understand, like, it wasn't just you were sitting on the couch for a year. You were probably yeah. having to do some stuff to, like, get your body to, to recover. So what was the recovery like when you broke your back? Yeah, so I actually had to, to relearn how to walk. Um, I lost 30, 30 pounds um, in that hospital and uh, spent a month in rehab, living at a rehab facility, relearning how to walk. Um, I lost all the muscle in my lower body, so you know, was on it with a walker for a long time and, um, spent a lot of time rehabbing and just building myself back up. But yeah, I was off the dirt bike for a year exactly. And then, um, got the release somehow and yeah, never looked back since. Man, that's, that's wild. Relearning how to walk. And then you still jump back on the dirt bike. <laughs> was there ever a part of you though, Christian, that said like, you know, it's not worth it, you know, and then you almost didn't want to get back on. Yeah, I think that that goes through everyone's head. Um, but I was young. I think I was 18 or 19. I mean, if you think now, I mean, if later in my career, I mean, obviously, that would probably, uh, you know, want to end it for me. But uh, I was young. I just wanted to ride dirt bikes. That's all I knew. That's all I wanted to do. Um, and so that was kind of the motivation to get back on and, and keep going. Man, that's crazy. So if anyone's complaining about a sprained ankle in basketball or something like <laughs> get real like let's let's put some things into perspective here now that we just heard that that's that is wild um from a mental standpoint you said it took you a little longer you still kind of think about it sometimes um what advice would you give to any athlete whether they're a racer or a traditional sports like athlete basketball football baseball whatever that might be scared of their the mental side you always hear it man like they tear their acl and they're never really the same there uh, their yeah. same tenacity. They're never, they always have that in the back of their head, naturally speaking. Like I've done the same, my shoulder, when I ripped it out, like still to this day, I, I'm not the same person mentally, even though I still can compete. Um, what would you, what advice would you give to them to try to help you overcome those mental barriers? It's hard because each person's different. I think your brain, your brain, you know, obviously you have that mental block when you have an energy or the injury and, um, you know, you're scared for a while. And that's number one thing is like, am I going to do it again? Is it going to happen again? Um, I think the, the biggest thing for me was just staying positive through it all. Uh, like looking at the brighter side, like instead of like, oh, I'm stuck here. I, I looked at like, oh, like in less than a year, I'm going to be back on the bike and uh, my dirt bike's waiting for me. You know, it was things like that that kept me going. Um, and then, yeah, just not beating myself up negative, you know, being negative to myself and, staying positive through it all. So I think that's the number one thing I would tell people. Um, I've met a lot of people that are going through injuries, big injuries. And that's what I say is just stay positive and, and, you know, you got to keep pushing, like never give up on yourself. Um, you know, there'll be better days ahead for sure. I love that. Absolutely. Love it, man. So in your professional career early on 2009 through now ups and downs, everything in between, I want you to tell us about some of your favorite races that you've competed in we heard about you know some of the memories from your dad but what's like your favorite race thus far because i know last year 2022 you had a really good you know season everything was going well is there a specific memory there or maybe it was before that that kind of really stands out to you and why that's your favorite memory yeah i think um my first win in 2016 would be the you know one of the biggest ones that stands out um just how long it took me to get my first win you know i went pro in 2009 and 2016 I got my first win. So it was a lot of ups and downs, a lot of, uh, struggles, uh, challenges, losing my, you know, my, my ride and then getting it back. Um, and then obviously last year was, was kind of a dream come true. It's what every rider hopes to do is to win a championship. And, uh, I was lucky enough to put myself in a good position and, and secure that last year. I won the, the 250 championship on the West coast. So that's huge. And that's obviously like a lifelong goal. Um, growing up, you see, you see the people you look up to uh, holding number one plates up, and uh, I got to do that last year. So it's huge, um, and it does a lot to yourself. You know, it does a lot mentally, confidence, um, and uh, to do that, that checks off you know the bucket list and, and a dream for sure. That that is so cool. Like the patience and perseverance. That, like I, as I'm learning about you in the the last you know 20 minutes almost, 
just I'm, I'm putting it through my head. This is what I do. I'm taking notes while I'm talking. I type them out when I'm, I'm listening to you. That's one of the things I, I put there was just patience and perseverance is what stands out to me about you because it's been a process and a, and a journey for you. And that right there is an experience of like, okay, it was, it was a minute before you actually got a big time win. And then you got that. Here's the next question then. You know, a lot of people, once they hit that top, it's hard for them to keep. And that's in business. That's in sports. It's in whatever. It's hard for them to, because then sometimes they don't experience that same success for a minute and they almost start to doubt themselves. And you mentioned earlier, something I wrote down was confidence is hard to come by and it's hard to keep. Like you can lose it pretty quick in this sport. So after that, that uh, victory there, and you had that, that solid experience, I guess what, now you have a taste of it. You know what it's like, and that can probably motivate you, but on the downturns too, when you're not doing so hot, how does that experience play a role? Does it, does it almost impact you in a negative way or is it always a positive thing? Cause you know what it takes to get up there. I think for me, it, it gave me a big exhale. You know, it was like, I finally did it. You know, I, I did what I've, I've been doing, like I've been wanting to do for so long and to finally like accomplish that. It was huge for me, for myself, for my family. Um, and then to have all my kids, like to have my three kids up there and like just celebrating it was huge for me. And, um, that's always in the back of my head is like, yeah, there's, you know, you're not going to win every race, you know, not every race can be perfect. You're going to have some falls. You're going to have some bad races, but, um, just knowing that in your back of your head that you've accomplished that, I think that's what, um, you know, keeps me going and, and wants me to keep, you know, I want to keep striving for more and trying to do that again. So that's huge for sure. And, um, yeah, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. You know, my career is, uh, been up and down. I think a lot of people's are too, but mine's been pretty crazy with just, uh, yeah, the way I've, I've made it through this career. So no, I'm stoked to be in this position I am today and yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. Heck yeah, man. You know, as you guys train for different courses, different tracks, everything, you know, I should say tracks. So when you're training for, for different events, um, how, how much time do you get to train on that particular track? Cause each one's probably done differently. I've talked to like bobsled racers and stuff and you know, they don't get a ton of trial runs on a specific course. They kind of have to pick it up quickly. I'm just curious in your sport, you know, if you're going to Salt Lake or you're going to Georgia, wherever you might be racing, every track's probably a little bit different. It's, it's, there's some different things there, but how much do you get to actually train on that particular course uh, before you actually have to, to hit it? So we, we get no practice on the course, um, until the day of the race, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, mm -hmm. every, every round we go to is, is a different track, different dirt, um, different layout. And, um, we don't touch that track till Saturday and we have three qualifying sessions, which is obviously practice, but you're also trying to get a, a good practice time. And then we go race that night. So minimum very minimum time on the track but that's that's everybody that you're racing against you know it's um just trying to be comfortable with what you you have that day um trying to attack it and then obviously yeah you try to bring it that night at the main event that's so crazy to me you don't get much time at all to really no. prep that man that's crazy um so if you could explain like let's just assume nobody who's listening to this which is not true but it, let's just assume nobody even understands how the the schedule works for your guys' sport if you could break it down for us how does like the season so to speak work for you guys and how often are you racing uh because i have some questions to follow up on that yeah so our series goes from january to may and that's the supercross series where we're in the stadiums and then from may to september i think it is we go it's called outdoors where we ride more natural terrain tracks. Um, and it's not in a stadium, it's more at an outdoor venue. So two different styles, but we all kind of race, you know, we all race the same way. So um, our off season is not long at all. We have about from September to November 1st is probably when we start back up getting ready for that, the start of the season. So about a month of, of actually like relaxing and not a lot of vacation time, but yeah, you're right back to it, preparing for the next season. Um, we, our Supercross series, we have about one weekend off. Um, the rest you're traveling and, and racing every Saturday night. So there's about 17 rounds, I think it is. Um, yeah, so it's pretty hectic. Like 
for a while there, you kind of get lost at where you're even going. And, uh, but yeah, we're going to, to Glendale this weekend and we got six more rounds. Um, and, uh, yeah, just trying to attack each weekend and, and trying to be the best. Man, see, you already answered one of my questions, like how frequently, and it, it definitely sounds like it's every week minus maybe one weekend you have off or whatever. Yeah. Um, so the grind, the mental grind, the physical grind of the season, staying locked in, that's something with your guys' sport that I've always been interested in because it's every, like it's just nonstop. Like it's never ending. And uh, to compete at a high level, you've got to be able to stay locked in how do you do that, Christian? Like, how do you stay locked, especially for someone like yourself who's at the top of the sport? How do you stay locked in while you're traveling every week? You've got a family. Like, how do you balance that so that others can probably learn from you? Yeah, it, it's tough for sure. And you got to find, like, I found what works best for me. Um, obviously, we ride during the week. That's our practice. We ride two to three times during the week. We do gym, cycling. Um, but also, we rest a lot. Um, and lots of rest on the couch you know especially thursday friday we're flying friday um and yeah race day goes by pretty quick you know saturdays they're long but they the time on the track is fast so um yeah it's it's pretty crazy it's a grind for sure and it is easy to get into like a, a slump um but you just got to stay focused you got to stay you know, you got to want it each weekend. You got to show up, um, put your best foot forward, and just uh, see where the cards play out. Man, awesome, though. Find what works for you. Um, I think that what you are doing, I want to give you a, a chance to also shout out, like, your YouTube channel. Yeah. I think what you guys have done is freaking cool, to be quite frank. Like, I think it's amazing. Uh, do you mind chatting about that for a second? Kind of telling the, the listeners what you've done with your YouTube channel and the media side of things, because that's pretty cool to me. Like, that's stuff that... As that's gonna that's what I'm gonna be following moving forward now that I know you. Like I I love that kind of stuff. So explain it to the listeners. Yeah, so like if you're going to a race, you're not gonna see the riders other than than on the track, really. Um we're pretty locked in and we're inside of our, our race semis most of the day, relaxing and getting ready for the next practice or race. So with our YouTube, I love to bring out, you know, the behind the scenes and what goes on, what I eat, what I what I do in the morning. Um the emotions between every race, you know, or the travel, just there's a lot that goes on in between that, that people don't see. Um, so we've been doing this for, you know, our YouTube for quite a while and, uh, we've been growing it and we got, you know, a lot of fans that, uh, support us. So it's been fun doing that. And obviously I got a wife, three kids and our, our life is pretty hectic. And, um, from, you know, look outside looking in, it looks like everything's perfect, but, um, if you go watch our YouTube, it's far from that, you know, we like to show the chaos and, and how it is raising three kids, but, uh, it's fun. You know, this is, this is, uh, I'm living my dream and, uh, got a great family that supports me and it's been cool, you know, just growing it and, and showing everybody, you know, that's, it is, it's super cool. So what's funny is my, my friend from, from work was, he's a huge fan of yours, by the way. Um, yeah. and he had told me all about that before but this is before i even like know because him, him and i talk about the sport quite a bit and he's a huge fan of yours specifically and he was like yeah have you actually checked out his youtube channel and i was like wait <laughs> wait what uh, and then i went and i'm like how did i not know about this so it's pretty freaking cool but i, I i'm going to be more of an avid follower now that i know you better from this podcast because that is so cool what you're doing i i i think it's huge to like show people the behind the scenes. That's what like fans want to see. And I wish more and more athletes in general would do something like that. It just takes a little bit of time and effort, but I do have a question. Who does the editing and everything? Is that you or is it your wife or who who's doing the editing? Do you guys have a media team that edits everything? No. So for, you know, up until this year, we, it was my wife. Um, she had the camera and she just pulled that thing out and put it in my face and, you know, <laughs> record it was like, all right, how was that practice or how was that race? And as much as I was pissed at my race, I, I had to put, you know, I had to talk and, and show my emotion. But, um, yeah, so my wife mainly does it. And then um, we, we got some help this year with some editing. And we have someone that helps us out just to, uh, you know, my, so my wife can, can watch the kids and not have to worry about it as much. But, yeah, we've grown it to a point where um, it's kind of a weekly thing. You know, we drop it on, on Mondays or Tuesdays. And, yeah, we have a, a good group of, of fans that people support us. Um, it's fun. Like, it's something that we're going to look back on, obviously, in the future and be like, wow, like, look at all the stuff we did and the the chaos and the travel and, 
you know, and then obviously the kids get to watch that stuff too. Man, it, it's so cool. I like, I think it's so awesome. And as a father of three myself, I think it's one of the coolest things that you get. You have that mm -hmm. as a memory. It's almost like a journal. It's a digital journal. Yeah. You guys have like put together during your, your career. So um, as you guys are wrapping up, you say you got six rounds left of, of this series and then you'll go into the outdoor stuff yeah. and, and whatnot. Talk to the listeners about what we can expect from you. Like, what are you wanting to accomplish? What do you need to accomplish in the next six weeks from the time of this recording um, in regards to your the, the end of this series? Uh, what, what do we need to see from you? And uh, like, what, what do you expect? Obviously, everyone wants to win, but what do you need to do to, in order to do that? Uh, for me, I'm, I'm on a new team this year. Uh, past few years, I was on Yamaha, and obviously, I won that championship, and now I'm in the 450 class, and I'm with Rockstar Husqvarna. And so... I've just been learning each weekend. Um, obviously, my results aren't the best, but I am improving. Um, so that's my thing is just improve each weekend. Try to be more closer to the front, um, get some top fives. And, you know, a podium is not out of reach. So that's kind of the thing for me is uh, show up each weekend and, and ride like I do during the week. If I could do that, then... Um, Sorry, I had a call. Oh, oh, you're good. I should have put it on no call. No stress, but, um, man. We can edit it. We're good. Yeah. So for me, yeah, six rounds left. It's we've we've done eleven now, and I've I've had a few good results, but um, I, I still believe I have more in the tank, and so that's that's my thing is just improving each week and, and try to be competitive. So cool, man. So we're looking forward to seeing the end of this this series. I, I do want to ask you, like, do you prefer indoor or outdoor, and why? Um, I, I seem to be better on, on Supercross, so indoor. Um, I do have good results outdoor, but outdoor is more grueling. Um, longer motos and uh, definitely a lot harder on the body. So I seem to uh, ride, ride Supercross a little bit better, but, you know, I, like I said, I have good results on both. So um, I'm looking forward to outdoors too and to see where I, I stack up there. Heck yeah, man. Well, in the racing world, we've seen – you know, you know, racers, we've got riders, we've got drivers in, in, in Indy and in NASCAR and everything. Everybody get, but there's, it's an individual sport, but it's also a team sport. You have a team that's behind you. Uh, but there's also the competition side. You're not just competing with yourself, you're competing against other, other racers. And, you know, you don't have to give specifics, but have there been, op or have there been times where you have gotten, you know, frustrated in the heat of competition with other racers? Maybe they cut India. There's probably a little bit of um, race etiquette from what I understand. There's certain things that, you don't do on a racetrack and whatnot. And, and I'm just curious, like, have you ever had to deal with the frustrations of another racer and how do you overcome those frustrations in the heat of the moment, so to speak? <laughs> yeah, of, of course. I mean, we all, we all part, uh, we all deal with that. You know, there's riders that aren't going to be as nice. Um, I seem to be too nice. Sometimes um, I could be a little bit tougher and a little bit harder to pass or uh, put up my elbows a little bit more, but, I am the way I am. So, um, but we all get in, you know, we all have our moments, um, whether it's in practice or the race, uh, there's a lot of emotions going on in the track. You know, there's a lot of, uh, guys that want to win just as bad as you, like I said earlier. And, um, sometimes that, uh, those collide, you know, so you're going to see a lot of craziness at the races. Um, people getting mad at each other and dramas unfolding, but that is part of our sport. Yeah, and you like the here's the the kicker with your sport is that it's not like a tradition. You have to see these people pretty frequently, like you know what I mean. It's not like you get away from them. Um, you're it's like a roommate that you don't like because you're with them every weekend almost, and it's it's tough. So I, it, these are the 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 questions that are like you might think it's dumb, but I actually am intrigued in like knowing like dude, you have to see them next week on a racetrack in this city and this week. So it's like that's why I was wondering like how do you even get a, get away from the drama, but I guess at the end of the day, you just have to kind of do your job and go and try to avoid it the best that you can. But man, that's, it's probably easier said than done. It's not always just, you know, sunshine and roses everywhere uh, with yeah. the other racers. Yeah. There's, there's, there's guys that, you know, to avoid or to stay away from um, guys that uh, get a little dirty on the track or, you know, are known to, to take other riders out. There's guys that you just, you, you see it coming. You're like, okay, you know, I'm going to avoid that situation. And, um but yeah we see each other each week and it's like a traveling circus kind of in a way um it's like one big family though it's 
yes, you're comp- competing each weekend with these guys, but you're also spending the whole Saturday with them and, you know, um, get to know these other riders and some of them you could become friends with. So it is fun. Um, like I said, a lot of chaos though. No, hundred percent, hundred percent, man. Uh, I do want to know, uh, Christian, what is the biggest life lesson that racing has taught you in the whole, like the ups and downs, everything in between, what's the biggest life lesson you've taken away from it? Gosh. Um, I just like the biggest thing would be just to never give up on yourself. Um, I've been, I've been down the dump so many times. Um, and something just kept telling, I just kept telling myself, you know, it's going to be better. It's going to get better. And, uh, it could have been so easy for me to just step away and and go get a nine to five or do something that was easier, but I kept challenging myself. Um, and I think that's, you know, what I try to show my kids is to never give up on themselves. You know, if, if it's in a sport or something in school, um, you know, if they watch their dad and, just know that obviously I won that championship and that was from hard work, um, a lot of ups and downs to get to that point. So, you know, that's, uh, that's what I share on my, on my YouTube, obviously. And, um, people get to see it firsthand. Dope. And when, and when the day is done, whenever that may be, that might be 10 years from now, might be 20 years from now, might be a year from now, who knows, whenever you make that decision that you're going to, you know, hang it up from, from racing, what what's next for Christian Craig? Like, what would you like to do? What's something outside of racing that you would like to do since this has been a part of your life, literally from the day you were born? Yeah. Um, I am, you know, I'm 31 now and, um, it's kind of almost time to start thinking about that, but, um, I don't want to lose focus and I feel like I still have a lot of racing under my belt to go. And, uh, but I, I do want to be around the sport when I'm done. Um, I, I've obviously grew up around this. I love this. I'm also a fan of the sport. You know, I love watching it. Um, if I'm not racing, I'm all about it. So my thing is just still be in the industry somehow, some way, um, be a part of a team or uh, be a coach or something. And uh, yeah, just be a part of the industry, help it grow. And yeah, just uh, be a part of the be a part of the industry. I love it. From the outside perspective, as as we wrap up this interview, I just want to know, I have a lot of business owners that listen to this podcast. I've got a lot of fans. I've got a lot of just general sports fans, you know. How can we, in our in my little sphere over here with my tribe and in, in my show, how can we have a positive impact on the industry for racing? Like, is there something that we can do to, to positively impact it, whether that's just getting more viewers to watch your guys' races and, and whatnot, or is it, is there other ways that we can help the industry continue to grow? I think, I think if someone that's never watched it, if you just go to a race, you're going to fall in love with it. The, the excitement it brings, um, there's never a dull moment. You know, you the crowds go crazy when these, these races go off. Um, and that's number one thing is go to a race and experience it for yourself. Walk around the pits, see the dirt bikes, see the riders, and watch it unfold. You know, you just never know who's going to win that night. You never know what's going to happen. That's the biggest thing. And the fans seem to love chaos. And that, uh, that always unfolds on Saturday night. You know, whether it's a crash or whether it's two riders getting into it. Um, there's always something going on. There's 22 riders out there on one track. And we're all trying to get to that one spot of, of winning. And so, um, yeah, watch it unfold. And I think just bringing eyeballs to the sport will help it grow. and this sport is awesome and uh and it's extreme too you know it's it's pretty crazy to to watch like i said i'm a huge fan of it too and i love this and and um yeah show up and and watch a race and see where it goes from there freaking love it man last question for you christian outside of your dad who was the racer who was a racer that uh you looked up to the most and why uh it's tough because uh it, it, when I was little, it was always my dad. Like I always wanted him to do the best, you know, yeah. but there's a few that stand out like that. I always tried to, to ride like, and that was like Ricky Carmichael, James Stewart, Jeremy McGrath. Those three are probably the, the best in our sport ever. Um, they probably have the most wins, but uh, yeah, those guys, I, I've kind of taken a little bit of piece of, of each of their style or the way they handled things and, and molded it into myself. Um, brought you know i try to just learn each week like i never i never try to do things that i think are my for myself the best you know like 
I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to take pieces from other riders and, and trying to build myself and make it better. So yeah, things like that. I love it, man. I love it. I just want to say thanks, Christian, taking time out of your busy, busy schedule. I mean, you're in the middle of the series. You're coming down in the last six weeks. I just appreciate you being willing to join me for my show, uh, share your story with us, share more about the sport with us. And I look forward to following you. And hopefully the listeners will be doing the same thing and we can get more eyeballs on the sport. But just want to say thanks once again for joining us and uh, being willing to share your story, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and check it out. Every Saturday night, we're pretty much at a stadium. Um, yeah, causing chaos. So check it out. And uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely, brother. For all those who are listening, I'm going to link all of Christian's pages here at the bottom of the description so you can find his YouTube channel, any of his social media pages. And I'll also be putting the link there so you guys can find if there's a race near you. Uh, so you guys can go check it out. Like he said, try to get to an event if you possibly can. And as always, if you guys feel the need to do so or feel up to it, please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. Helps the show grow. And uh, we'll be coming to you next week with another interview. Take care. Guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show. Now, if you could go and do me a favor, head over to iTunes, give me five stars and leave me a review. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your support.